The most awkward thing I found up a chimney, a letters of affair. I'm not going to say where or names or nothing like that. <laughs> Client confidentiality there. <laughs> do you have to like do a Hippocratic oath or, <laughs> like, as a chimney sweep? I know it's from Portugal, that's all I'm saying. I'm Josh and I'm a chimney sweep. Chimney sweeps do attend uh, weddings because they're deemed good luck. And I actually get phone calls to attend weddings dressed as a Victorian chimney sweep. <laughs> Older women, sometimes when I'm walking and they see the badge, I do get a kiss sent my way. But that's not cheating, Sammy, I'm on the other <laughs> side of the road. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you can beat a shortbread. You like a shortbread? Oh, I, I, Josh, I, did we and just become BFFs? Hi, you are watching Things People Do with me, Jamala, on YouTube. Click like or subscribe. Only click like if you like it. In fact, no. Click like if you don't like it. Because we all lie sometimes. Click subscribe if you want to be subscribed. <sighs> Fuck, I'm out of breath. Enjoy. I feel right at home now. Thank you very much. <laughs> so this time it's worked. So yeah, me, I might end up going a bit like that sometimes, but it's not out of offence. It's more out of trying to make it a little bit comfortable for you. Brilliant. What are you going to do? I think I'm going to address the issue of stereotypes here, Joe, because when I found out we were having a chimney sweep mm. on the show, I was expecting a man with still some chimney soot on his face possibly in black. You are in black, Josh. I am in black. Mm. There's no other way of putting this. I thought chimney sweeps would always be very skinny, but you're a strong man. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, <laughs> two strong men at the table. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh, that is it. Um, I'm stronger than I look, Josh. I'm just not no, uh, you or Jack. I, 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 I believe no, you. Um, no, yeah, so, um, yeah, chimney sweeps, you'd think they'd be small to fit the chimneys, but um, nowadays we use brush brush and rods um, to actually clean the chimneys. But back in the day, um, it was children. Um, the uh, master sweeps of the day would um, often go to very poor families and orphanages and buy children from the age of four. They'd buy them? Yep, yeah, buy them. Not, not very much money at the time. Don't ask me how much. Um, I didn't know how much they went for back then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and they would actually climb, um, climb, climb the flues and sweep them. Um, with small hand brushes, but it was a very dirty, horrible job. Um, life expectancy of a child of the day um, wasn't very old at all. Um, the master sweeps didn't treat them very well, often just give them minimal food and water, um, because obviously if they ate too much, they wouldn't actually fit. I was going to make that as a joke. <laughs> so when the owners were asked or were held to account, Joe, about not looking after the, mm. what were they called, junior sweeps? They were actually named Climbing Boys. Um, that was a official job title, was Climbing Boys. Um, and they were often promised um, that if they went with the Master Suite one day that they would become the Master Suite, but they never sort of lived to see the day. Oh. Um, so it was actually quite a sad, um, sad, sad story, really. So you, they didn't used to get fed that much in case they didn't fit up it. Exactly. So do you feed them now? <laughs> um, so nowadays, um, I'm glad to say that that rule um, was... Um, in Parliament in, I think it was 1864, the Lord of Shaftesbury um, made it illegal to employ um, climbing boys and made it, uh, you had to be over 16 to climb a chimney and obviously no 16-year-olds would fit up a chimney. So they actually <laughs> brought in um, brush and rods, but back in the day it would have been um, a bamboo shaft with many, with a bristled brush, um, brush head. But um, current in you know, in current day sweeping chimneys now have advanced so much more. Um, we use nylon rods, which are very flexible um, for log burners and liners are exceptional to sweep with. Um, but still, still to still to this day, we do sweep big old open chimneys, and we use more rigid rods. Um, mm. But yeah, climbing boys, yeah, they weren't fed um, very much at all because obviously they 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 could get stuck, and in cases did get stuck and did die in chimneys. What? People um, get stuck. Yeah, the, the, when the, when the climbing boys would climb the chimney, um, they would get stuck, and sometimes to make them get out, the actual master sweep would light a fire. What? Uh, yeah, it, it's terrible. As if they were not really stuck, and a bit of heat yeah. on their ass would. Oh yeah, that'll fucking make them. Well, actually, right. probably did. If you're stuck, you're stuck. Right. Well, no. Well, hang on. Let's just play that through a bit. <clears throat> Say you're stuck in this room. Mm -hmm. 
on your own. Mm. It's quite big, isn't it? Am I wedged like I would be in a chimney or just No, you're just in the no, you're just in the room. Mm -hmm. And I set fire to it. How quick are you getting out compared to a room that's not got fire in it? So But if I can't get out of it in the first place, the fire just makes No, you can, break. there's a hole, there's a door there. And I've not used it earlier. Yeah, so you used it to come in. <laughs> so I've, I've refused to leave the room. Yeah, so you're in this room, you've come in that door, I've lit a fire in it, and then... You've gone out, out through that door. Yeah, I'm out, I've set a fire, you, and then like a timer, it's gone off, <laughs> and then pff, it's up in, <sighs> up in flames. How quickly are you getting out that door compared to if there was no fire, how quickly are you getting out the door? You're going to go quicker, aren't you? I think I will go slightly quicker. Yeah, so it's actually, although it's cruel, it's a fair point. You light the fire, they're fucking getting out, aren't they? But, but, but no, not always. Because oh. um, in chimneys, you are, it's very, obviously they're in very tight positions, obviously with one hand above them, one hand below them, and they would sort of shuffle up and down the chimneys. And in lots of houses, you've got offsets in chimneys, so they could actually be stuck at an angle. Um, you know, they wouldn't be like sat, you know, in a nice position like we are. They'd be at awkward angles. Um, and if the fire didn't get them out, they'd, the actual sweep um, would have to ask permission from the homeowner to actually knock a, knock a hole in their house to get the, get the climbing boy out. And um, it was down to the owner or not. Some, you know, there has been skeletons found what? of climbing boys in um, chimneys. I believe, actually, um, I think they found some sort of skeleton in Parliament. I'm... In one of the ch old chimneys there. they got fucking skeletons everywhere in that place. Exactly. Hey, you know what I mean by that, don't you? I like the point you've made there, Joe. You've just moved it slightly from the original meaning to a, a different but yeah. still excellent meaning. Like a, like an analogy. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine being the homeowner who, when confronted by the master sweep, says, listen, bit of an issue. There's a seven-year-old kid stuck in your chimney. Uh, all right, he's now got a burnt arse because I've lit a fire on it. He's still stuck. Would you rather that I very briefly opened an aperture in your chimney, which I will then brick up again afterwards, yeah. or let him die, and you'll probably hear him screaming as he dies of starvation? Which of the two options would you like, landowner? Well, uh, there's a third option. You could just have a small aperture that I could just feed him through. But you're going to feed him. He's going to get stuck for longer, isn't he? Do you want to hear something else that's crazy? Definitely. Quite often they'd send up another climbing boy and they could have two two children stuck in the <laughs> chimney. <laughs> Who thought that as a solution? This is like the old woman who swallowed a fly. <laughs> but it's, Go on, uh, hang on. Sorry, Josh. Go on. Well, then she swallowed a spider, didn't she, to deal with the fly? And then the spider was the issue. You know this. So she swallows a bird. And then the bird's the issue, so she swallows a cat. Don't look at me like that. And no one old lady who swallowed a fly. <laughs> I'm starting to doubt myself. Nah, not heard of it. What? Josh. I'm oh, clueless, come on. mate. <laughs> My expertise is cheese and cider. Can't you tell by the accent? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So we've established a few things already early on in this pod. Um, and you, one of them is you don't look anything like an 89-year-old white-haired... Um, Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke. You were waiting for Dick Van Dyke, weren't you? I was waiting for Dick yeah. Van Dyke. Chim chimney. Do you still get that as a chimney sweep? Do you get anyone go just singing the song to you when yeah, you turn up? I get some um, quite. I mean, you might know the story, but chimney sweeps are actually meant to be lucky um, and treated with the greatest respect. Um, Why are you meant to be lucky? What, like the little animal in Mulan? No. So it is. It, so legend has it in the sev in seventeen hundred, King George the second and his daughter were in their carriage and cart getting taken around the streets of London, um, and one of the horses got fr um, was frightened by something, and the horse and carriage completely went out of control, um, and everybody was hiding. But out of the mist come a brave chimney sweep, <laughs> and grabbed the reins of the horses, brought them to a stop. And the king got out of his carriage and uh, wanted to thank the saviour, who was a chimney sweep. Um, I believe tried paying him with uh, money and jewellery of the time. And he was too humble and said, I'm just glad you're all right. I mean, I would have took the money and the jewellery. Um, I bet he regretted that when he got But it. from that day forth, um, he deemed chimney sweeps to be good, um, to be a good luck um, and should be treated with the greatest of respect <laughs> and actually invited him to his daughter's wedding, which was the next month, 
for a symbol of good luck. So quite often chimney sweep <laughs> include. No, so yeah, go. he did go. So that's that's why um, people, you know, chimney sweeps. They, they used to, not so much nowadays. I'm not having one at mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you're there. Yeah, but I am there. So that's <laughs> good luck. Not inviting any of your so, colleagues. So no. So um, but my, my colleague Rory, he's uh, yeah, he would take up too much space. He's about six foot eight and built like a fridge. Um, <laughs> But that's why chimney chimney sweeps do attend uh, weddings because they're deemed good luck. And I actually get phone calls to attend weddings dressed as a Victorian chimney sweep. <laughs> 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 tell me, John. Please tell me I, that you offer that as a service. So it, if you don't, if you don't, you have to offer I it. I mean, the Come amount on. of calls that I get, I do think maybe I should, yeah. Um, you know, a bit more bread in the basket, but you can. Uh, I mean, look, it's a double winner because you go to a wedding, which is always good fun. You get yeah. fed and watered, and you get paid for dressing up as a Victorian chimney sweep. No, I don't think I'd suit looking like a Victorian chimney sweep, though. Like you said, maybe I'm a bit large. Well, just I think that sweeps at the time would have been skinny. I don't think unless people, people unless I take a little climbing boy, <laughs> no, and they, I can be the mean master. They're not going to that <laughs> wedding and then going. Hang on a minute. <laughs> That chimney sweep's not realistic enough. Like, that should be a seven-year-old boy dressed as a chimney sweep. They're not going there, Josh. Don't worry about it. You're just going to play your part. And yep. if you took it, if, as you say, if you took the role to its fullest length and you went as a master sweep and took a, a boy as a well, yeah. extraordinary. You'd be the hit of the wedding. Yeah. You'd probably be in every single photo, including the one that's usually just the bride and groom. Mm. Although you say you're a lucky charm, percentages are that, 50% of every marriage ends in divorce now, so you probably end up getting a lot of shit as well. Mm. They'll be like, oh, you're meant to be lucky, but... but maybe that's because they didn't have the chimney sweep. He's right. Turned He's turned it around and thrown it back in your face. I'm getting married in May, so don't curse me with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> 50%. <laughs> Sammy, will yeah. last longer. <laughs> <laughs> but that's... Anyway, going back on the story why chimney sweeps are good luck... Yeah. Um, because it, they grab horses. Well, that, because they saved King King George II. Yeah. But in the in in the film Mary Poppins, in the song, I'm not a singer, so I'm not going to sing it. But there's a verse that goes. How does it go? That, we'll join him. Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim A sweep is as lucky as lucky can be. Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chiru. Good luck will rub off if I shake hands with you. Ew. Or blow me a kiss, and that's lucky too. So this is a true story. Yeah. A few of the old, older women, sometimes when I'm walking and they see the badge, I do get a kiss sent my way. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not cheating, Sammy. I'm on the other side of the road. <laughs> Um, and and and, and, they, and then quite often when I finish a job, people like to shake my hand. Yeah. I always ask them if they're getting a lottery ticket because I am fancying a new truck. They win. <laughs> Joe, it feels like we've got about eighteen steps that we want to reverse back over here. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask about. I mean, I had a question lined up about if you're going to a wedding as a Victorian chimney sweep. Uh, like weddings all about white dresses and white cakes. Oh yeah, but that mm. I've forgotten that now because no. twenty other things have happened yeah. subsequent to that yeah. thought. Yeah, good. But yeah, <laughs> well, quite often I know people who, who do attend <clears throat> weddings. However, the, obviously you get the old brush and that, and you you tend to hold it over the bride because obviously they're in white, and ask if you want to shake the brush, which <laughs> they probably say no. <laughs> I had but no idea this was a, a thing. There's a lot of history behind sweet chimney sweeps, see, and in in some countries there's really strange things. Like I think in 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 Europe. It's lucky to touch a chimney sweep's button. It's button. Just, just I, one of the buttons. Zip, got... zip, zip nowadays. But um, yeah, if you touch a button of a chimney sweep's good luck. So just random people can come up to you and touch your zip. I know we sort of get harassed really when you look at it like that. Yeah. But um, well, you got old women blowing kisses. I know, you, and it's not cheating. Not cheating. And people are coming up touching your zip. What if your zips you know, the only zip you got is your flies? <sighs> That'd be a hard one to explain. The sound. Well, it would be. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Also, if you're a chimney sweep <laughs> and you were to put your hands anywhere on someone else, it would be very obvious where your hands have been, I imagine. Mm. I mean, in modern day, believe it or not, chimney sweeping, I mean, it's mainly log burners nowadays. Um, it's actually a very clean job. Um, it, I'm probably not painting the picture, but it's sort of, I don't come out of jobs covered in soot. Um, we obviously wear PPE nowadays, which is really important. <laughs> um, so it's not, it's not, if it's done right, it's not a dirty job. 
Um, I, you know, I'm sort of in my uniform, as you can see, and I sort of go home looking like this. Um, you look immaculate. Thank you very much. You are very well turned. I mean, it's a black uniform. I mean, it's a good colour. What's JN for? Um, that's my initials, Josh Nash. Oh, Josh Nash. 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 Nash with an I. Nice. <laughs> Nash. He's literally just said it. Nash. Nash. No, you sound Australian now. Nash. Nash. Nash, yeah. Nash. Boy, Josh. It's a lot of sh, isn't it? Nash. Josh. Nash. Josh Nash. Yeah. Josh is such a nice person. You won't want to live. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. JN Chimney. JN Chimney, Chimney yeah. yeah. I started it in lockdown, actually, so um, when when the world was all doom and gloom, I thought I'd try and get something good out of it, and I decided to become a chimney sweep. Have you ever been in a chimney? Like, a, do you actually a big, go in? A, a big one, yeah, like an ingle nook. Like when you, oh, quite, What's an ingle nook? Um, probably the fires that you see in pubs, you like the big... Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, they normally got a tiny basket, but a big opening. Yeah. Um, some... So, Sometimes, you know, obviously you can go in and you can sort of get, sh you actually can get sheeted into the chimney. Um, obviously, you've got all the PP and the stuff and you can sweep it from inside. I tend not to carry them sort of jobs out. Too much hassle. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you need to put the wedding service yeah, on it to yeah, make up it, for those yeah. jobs that you're not doing to do that one. I couldn't think of anything worse than going up a fucking chimney. Really? Like, hot holing? That's the same thing. Worse. That is worse, yes. Underground rather than above ground. Underground, any sort of fucking claustrophobic shit, I ain't doing it unless I'm heavily medicated or asleep. So I think that's a no, Josh. Is it? You so can... some of, some of the chimneys, though, even for a man of your. Why are you looking at my darb? <laughs> Good. Um, no, <laughs> are quite are quite wide. Um, yeah. But I mean, why didn't you look at my shoulders? You, you, why, instead, you uh, straight at the darb. You, you, right? you yep. don't actually go up, like climb up them. Um, mm. You're sort of in, but. Um, I mean, the majority of them now are, are log burners, so it's, you know, you can sort of strip a log burner and go through the log burner, so you're actually, you know, you're not actually sort of climbing in. I think, Joe, we need to get a sense of how this works. So let's say, have you got a log burner at home, Joe? You got um, I've got a, uh, I've got a, I've got a fireplace. Have I? What have I got? I've got a fireplace in Jasper's room, mm -hmm. but there's no fire under it. Sort of disused. Disused. Boarded up or still a functional chimney? Well, no, shit still comes down it. It's, but it just goes onto the carpet. Get, and the, I'm like, get the sweep in. Get the sweep in? Get the sweep Yeah, but yeah. then you'll just pull all the shit out. Exactly, and, and then no more, stuff will, not, no more stuff will drop down. Right, so we've got that one that's disused. Well, it is because we don't light it. Then in the lounge, we've got a um, a log burner. Wood burning stove. Like yeah, um, that, but it's got block, it, it's blocked the chimney. Do you use it? Uh, I mean, what with log burners, what they tend to do is drop a liner down, a flexible liner down the chimney, and join it to the to the wood burning stove. Um, but it shouldn't be blocked if it's no. I mean, like it's blocked out, so it's like you have got the wood. Oh burner, yeah, yeah, and the pipe. Then goes there's through. a pipe, goes and then a around plate. it is all like blocked, and then I presume the pipe just goes. Yeah, down. no, no, definitely. And then we have got a wood burner in the kitchen, oh. um, but we don't use any of it. The house is always so fucking cold. <laughs> But, it seems an easy solution there. Yeah, we don't use it because we Daisy gets scared about because uh, we haven't had the chimney sweep round. <coughs> you're, <t> <laughs> you're probably you're probably out of my uh, zone radius. Um, yeah, we don't. I don't know. I guess that's the solution, is it? It is. It is. So, you, so how often do would I have to have that swept? Um, once a year, really. Right. Um, is that like a legal requirement? I mean. Yeah, I mean, obviously they can't make you, but um, quite often now, house, home and house insurance, um, if you have got a, a, a solid fuel or wood burning stove in your house, they want um, they want like proof of maintenance. So getting the chimney sweeping once a year to sweep the chimney, um, yeah, is a must really. And and all trained professional chimney sweeps will issue a certificate of sweeping, which you just keep with your normal documents. And if ever you had to go through insurance. Through the fire or the flu, you've got up-to-date paperwork and the insurance companies will pay out. Um, often, if you haven't got much records at all, like most insurance companies, they don't like putting their hand in their pocket. So you, <laughs> so 
So that's 60, 70 quid to get the sweep in. Um, has just turned expensive <laughs> if you're rebuilding the side of your house, Joe. So it Brilliant. might be worth getting the sweep in. Okay, right, I'll get the sweep in. Get the sweep in, Joe. And Josh, if Joe does that, uh, how would the process work? Let's say we're starting, which room do you want to start in, Joe? Do you want to start with one of the log burners or...? We'll do Jasper's one, a Jasper's. disused chimney, but it's so, got shit coming down. So if the chimney's disused, technically you obviously don't have to have it swept, but quite often we get phone calls to sweep disused chimneys for that reason, deposits falling down, can't be, you know, hoovering it every morning. So would you ever recommend, sorry to interrupt, mate, would you ever recommend this um, this thing that I saw on uh, Dragon's Den once, could, where it's like a chimney umbrella type thing, you put it in and then you blow it up and it just stuffs it to stop yeah. shit coming down? So that's like a draft excluder. They, they have got a good one out called Chimney Sheep. <laughs> Chimney sheep. Yeah, Ooh. chimney sheep. In fact, I like what they've done there. Yeah, yeah in picture fact, it immediately. Yeah. In fact, your friend Flats is looking at buying one soon. Oh, is um, he? Yeah. Um, and that that acts as a draft excluder. That will that will stop stuff falling down. But eventually, over time, more and more stuff will fall on top, and it can force it to fall out, and then you have a big mess. But by getting the getting the chimney swept, cleaned, and then blocking it off would be your best bet for your uh, your son's room. Yeah, it's his son's, room. Yeah, yeah. And we look, actually. Is that part of why the house is cold? Yeah, because... Would I lose heat through that? Yeah, so, you know, yeah, I mean, if you're not using... If it's an open fire, an old open fire, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of the... You know, it's a massive draft that goes up that chimney, so it could get very cold in his room. So by blocking it off with that Dragon Den's idea or a chimney sheep um, would be your best option. Right, OK. So let's say we've done that one, you've sorted that out, but I now want you to come in and do the wood burner. Yeah, I want it. I want it cleaned. I want it ready yeah. to fire up the next couple of months because it's still a little bit nippy out there. What, how does that? Work? So obviously, yeah, um, <clears throat> we cheat up the we cheat up the front room. Um, not not all the furniture because you know we don't have you do a good chimney sweep. Won't have to do that. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then Just raised your hand yeah. on a podcast. That's good. Yeah, I know, that's for the YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we'd strip the stove. It's like a puzzle. Um, it's probably, some stoves can be dead simple, some stoves can be really complicated. So we'd strip the stove um, to allow the baffle plate to drop out and then that would give us access to the flue from the inside flue? your house. So the flue is where the smoke goes up. So that, that would be from the log burner all the way to the top of your house with the chimney Chimney potted. flue. So it's called a chimney, but we we call it a flue, but on your log burner, you'd most probably have a liner, a flexible liner, right. which is the flue. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then we would, obviously, I tend to issue two or three rods, seal off the log burner, attach the hoover, push the rods to the top and sweep down. And then you get a big deposit of soot in, left in your stove at the end of it, hoover it all up, and then I'm on to the next. If I've had a cup of tea by then, would I have a cup of tea by then? Uh, I would have offered you a cup of tea On a or, or a coffee. I'd have made it. Do you drink coffee? Um, I yeah, but oh. be, between nine and twelve, and then I tend to get off it after twelve. Get a bit shaky of voice. Squires. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, I fucking love you. I fucking love. You. <laughs> I tend to get a little bit shaky. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you'd have had a cup of tea then. Talk us through these rods. Mm. Like you said yeah. about a nylon. Originally, yeah. it used to be bamboo rods, was it? So yeah, back back in the early <laughs> days when when rods first come about, yeah, they would have been made from wood. Um, bamboo was quite a good material, well, obviously a good material of the day. But now, as times has developed, um, we use we yeah we use tend to use nylon rods, um, and obviously they come in different like flexibility and rid you know like, stiffness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It's a preemptive snigger from Josh there. Wait um, for Joe to dive in. Um, <laughs> He's and, gone uh, off no, his own word. Um, and so obviously on the liners and the and like the stove that you have at your home, we'd use a flexible one so it doesn't put too much pressure on the liner. Um, if you use a really rigid, stiff one, <laughs> it would pop it out sometimes. Like you could put too much force onto the liner and it could pop it out of place. Oof. But, a good, you know, that we have, I mean, I've probably got, Four or five different sets of rods, um, mm. all different flexibilities, and I've probably got about forty different heads that go on to them. Mm. So, we we you know what do these heads we, look like? So you get obviously you got the traditional sort of brush type mold 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 brush heads that we use a lot. Um, mole. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, mold mold brush heads. They're called. Why they're is like, it called mole? Like, um, they look like a mole. No, no. They're made of mole. You'd have to ask um, 
the, the brush manufacturer on that case, Joe. I'm just a sweep. Um, <laughs> but my favourite one for liners is what we... I mean, I don't even know the real name from, but I call them a whiphead. A whiphead? Uh, I call them a whiphead. They're like a nylon... Again, it's almost like a, a brush, but it's like... You know, like a strimmer, bottom of a strimmer yeah. cord? Oh, yeah. So, so that's, that's what spins... Because um, I, I rotary sweep, so I have a drill. I have a drill at the bottom of them, and the drill's doing the spinning. I don't do it by hand. What do you mean the drill's doing the spinning? So what's it so spinning? It, so it used to be. It used to be the old way, the old arts. I mean, they still. It, you can still sweep like that. I mean, I do on some chimneys, but there's two types of sweeping. Yeah. You have got manual and rotary. Yeah. And a few others, but they're not very good. But manual. <laughs> so that, there's more than two types of sweeping. Yeah, but <laughs> we just don't go, we won't go off topic. But manual and and rotary is the best. Um, manual is obviously doing it with your own arms, yeah. so you get a bit of a workout, um, which I don't do often. Um, and then rotary is where you 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 have a drill attachment on each rod. You have a drill attachment, and the drill is what's spinning the brush. So you can imagine the the brush head would be turning at a greater pace with a drill than it would. Doing it by hand, so a bit like going for a car wash, where you see that big, yeah, like, flappy. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you tell. I mean, I tend to do five or six passes, um, unclip, and then clip my drill onto the next rod, and you work your way down. See, so a standard house would probably be ten rods high, but uh, where I'm from in Bath, um, you know, some of the some of the properties can be sort of between twenty two and thirty rods high, <laughs> and, a, and a rod's a metre, mind. Oh. So, so why wouldn't you say metre then? Because he's using a rod. So so each rod's a metre. Oh, yeah. It's so, literally so a, standard, a rod. So a standard semi would probably be, that <laughs> detached house would be <laughs> about 10 rods. Mm. And then some of these bigger properties in Bath. Um, nice Georgian property. Like like flats would be a lot bigger. So do you have to like, say with this pencil here is a rod. Yep. Not to scale. Okay. Do you, <laughs> <laughs> would I then have to get, here's your pen, please. <clears throat> gonna dock my so then make pencil. the rod bigger. Yeah. Do I then add another rod? Yeah. So you, so you'd issue one rod in the chi in the chimney at a time. Then you got a, you'd clip the second the next one on and then clip the next one on and clip the next one on. Are the rods a little bit like you, um, yeah, to the top. when you go camping? The tent, you know, the like tent yes, rods. Nice analogy. They pull out and then they fold in and then they fold in. They... No, no. So oh. so so they're in, so they're individual. Thanks. So so you, so if that pencil was a rod, you you might have twenty of them in a bag. Right. Which you'd carry in. A bit like a snooker player's extension he puts on his cue for his spine. Yeah, spinal. exactly. So, I've got to be honest, you are looking magnificent today. What about you? You're looking lovely too. I wonder if it's anything to do with our new wardrobe from Hera. I think you might be right, Joe. Like, when you told me I needed a new wardrobe, I was slightly sceptical because it's Really hard to find something that works for you, but also works for me. That's the thing though, mate. Hera offer good quality, attainable clothing. And whilst they do specialise in denim and comfortable sweats, they've got a wide range and versatile collection for both men and women. Well, that's good news. Mate, honestly, their stuff is great. It fits lovely, it looks great, and it's super comfy. Where can people find Hera, Joe? You can go and treat yourself to a brand new look at heraclothing.com. That is H-E-R-A clothing.com. Hey, you want a jumper as nice as mine? Go to heraclothing.com. Come on, come on, come on. I'm dancing like this because I feel so good. And I feel so good. Because got my hair of clothes on. If you want to feel as good as I do, look as good as I do in this hair hoodie that I've got, go to hairaclothing.com. Hera. 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 That's H E R A clothing.com. So those were the adverts. <laughs> Josh, I would like to know. The most unusual things you've found up chimneys. Well, you better have it because on your application it says you won't believe the things I found up chimneys. I found lots of things up chimneys. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, probably the the most awkward thing I found up a chimney 
are letters of a, uh, letters of affair. Um, I got. I'm not going to say where or names or nothing like that. Um, uh, client confidentiality there. <laughs> um, but um, you sign like. Do you have to like do a Hippocratic oath or <laughs> like, as a chimney sweep? It's like to the Dick Van Dyke oath or. Uh, no, there's no there's no oaths in okay. chimney sweeping. Just professional respect. Just professional respect. So I arrived to this property. Somewhere near Bath, um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, as I arrive, I knock the door, and this older man opened and 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 then said, "You must be the chimney sweep." And I looked at me badge and said, "Correct." <laughs> um, <laughs> I love this detail to the story. And he said, "Right, there's three chimneys in the house that need sweeping. Got a log burner in the front room. We got an open fire in the dining room." And then we've got a disused chimney um, in the office upstairs. Mm. Quite a big, nice, posh house. He said, um, which one do you want to do first? So I was like, well, being wise, I'll work my way to my van. So I started at the furthest, which was the office, and walked work towards it. And as I was sheeting up, the gentleman of the house come in and said, um, well, I've just got to shoot out now, but my partner will be back um, soon. <laughs> and as I'm looking... <laughs> As I'm looking up the no more specific than that. As I'm looking up the chimney, I see a bag for life, Tesco's bag for life. You know the sturdier ones. Uh-huh. Um, and I just managed to reach and pull it, and but in pulling it, I rip a corner of the bag for life, and out spill these letters from another gentleman. Well, not so much gentleman because what was on them was pretty detailed. Um, <laughs> even, even even I even I even I was started and blush. What was, um, what was it was not so much gentleman. He was filthy. He was he, he was filthy. What I mean, was the filthiest thing in the letter? I don't know. Can it be said on? Go for it. Oh, well, it's not, it, 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 no, it was, de- it, it, it was de- de- no, no. It was very, it was very detailed Back that they me. were very fond of each other and <laughs> maybe had you know done certain things in the past which he wanted to repeat. Um, the bastard. But as that happens, the wife walks in. Um, and just to clarify, this is my third day on the job as a qualified chimney sweep. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So I didn't know if I was going to be a chimney sweep or a counsellor for the next hour. Um, <laughs> but I played really dumb, tied the bag up, put it to one side. As she come in, she was very obviously very embarrassed. Um, so hang on, they were her letters from the, they, they were addressed. They were, they were addressed to her, but from right. a, another fella. So not from her husband. No, 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 no. no. So that's why she was hiding them up the chimney. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, she would have left them on the the front, di- you know, the dining room table, and um, and yeah, and she come in um, red as a beetroot. She went, shit, you found them, you found them, and I obviously act dumb and said, I found this bag up the chimney and. I don't know why I said it. I said, but it might be old newspapers, but it was in a bag for life, which was probably brought out that year, so it was quite clear it wasn't old newspapers. But, you, it... but you could store old newspapers in a new bag for life. Yeah, but it'd be pretty weird to shove them up a chimney, wouldn't it? Correct. <laughs> I mean, I mean if, you had that, if you had that as a hobby, putting old newspapers in, in bags bag and shoving life. them up chimneys. Yeah. Hey, point taken. Each their own. Exactly. And anyway, she, so she took the bag and walked out the room and... Um, I heard her pacing around and she she come in and she was she looked pretty frightened actually and was like, um, you know what they are, you know what they are. And I said, Look, I'm here to sweep the chimney. And so I finished my job as a professional. <laughs> um went on me jolly way. <laughs> but as I was leaving, she, at some point she must have went into my toolkit, took my little torch, thieving bastard, and she said, Josh, you forgot something. She come running over to me and give me my torch. But wrapped right round it was a 20 quid note. So just 20 quid? I, <laughs> I know. At, at, at the time, I was starting off, so it was quite a lot of money. You know, you know, it got me my uh, McChicken sandwich on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that there's so much to go at it, Joe. I love the fact that she's just gone, I could give him 20, I'd give him 50. The marriage is worth 20. Mind, <laughs> <I'll give> him... <laughs> Mind you, I, I, How much? I, I did get endless cups of tea and Jaffa cakes. Once yeah. she once she realised, yeah, that. what only on the job or like oh no forever? no no only on the job that'd be nice to oh, dropping yeah. around. Actually, funny enough, I did drive past the house. For bl- I mean, this was t- two or three years ago when that happened. I did drive past the house last year and it was for sale. So maybe she oh. just ran off with this other gentleman. Well, not gentleman, this other knob, isn't it? 
Did he make any? Was there any reference in the letters? Because you, I know you don't want to tell us what was in the letters. That's fine. That is confidentiality. Was there any reference to him putting things in her chimney? Yes, her personal chimney. <laughs> and other objects on her maybe the body. Chimney. Was there? Yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, it's pretty. De- it was a bit like, um, is it Fifty Shades of Grey? I didn't. Oh, know. I was reading that yeah. or a love letter. It was pretty detailed. Have you ever found something like that on the job? I mean, I'm not a chimney sweep, so it's a difficult question <laughs> to ask. <laughs> I'm sort of, I'm impressed that he actually took the time to write a letter. I mean, you've you've described yeah. him as not as a gentleman. I understand the, that, Josh. They, it could have been an email or a text message. Exactly, but old school. exactly. It, and and they were, I would say, between. 65 and 75 years oh, old mm. age. So he's probably keeping it, you know. And it was almost on like um, a postcard type. A saucy um, postcard. Yeah. But like not, you know. But yeah, it was um, yeah, it was a very awkward moment. Um, no but, no pictures with it? The, oh, no, no pictures. Uh, just writing, just writing. But it was... Diagrams? Uh, no diag. No, it was just it was literally what he wanted, like how much he missed her. And so they obviously must have met. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, I know he was from Portugal, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Did he, was that because he referenced Portugal in the letter? Or? Yeah, yeah, and um, I, I... Hang on, how do you know that he's from Portugal? Maybe they... Maybe he lived in Portugal. No, no, he, he, I think he had a very Portuguese-type name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, it, and, and he was referencing in one of the letters, in like a part of the letter about something they'd done in yeah. a place in Portugal. What, what I'd like to explore a little bit more, Josh, is... Um, I'd like to think that if I'd found them, if I was on the job, I'd found them, had a little look and just gone, oh, they're just a bit, whatever, a load of letters or whatever it was, and I'd just put them on the side. What went through your brain to go, oh, fuck, I'm going to read all of these in such detail <laughs> no, to find out he's got a Portuguese so, name? So, so it, I, as I ripped the Tesco's bag for life and ah. one fell out, I just wondered what it was and I, I only read a paragraph <laughs> i once sat there you know <laughs> with my glasses on <laughs> reading through them and there was about half a dozen mind you i only read half a page of one yeah scarred me for life <laughs> <laughs> what is it what exactly did this portuguese <laughs> resident say oh, oh he's all sorts you could see yeah, it getting it, all worked up was here. it the first time you'd seen the act or heard the, of the act that he was mentioning was oh, it oh, no <laughs> 30 years old so it was a standard act but just the graphic description I mean it was all what made it awkward was I know you know knowing the fact that she was you know it's, it wasn't her woman it wasn't his woman was, is there a possibility there was some sort of role playing going on on here and actually the oh. gentleman of the house it was like a way of because you said they're between oh, 65 well, and 75 maybe, trying yeah. to keep a spark That's a whole there. different out yeah. yeah he would he would occasionally hide a letter say I've, I've hidden a letter for you in your hello I am Angel that's more Spanish. Hello, think I am how, Jose. No, no, think how Jose Mourinho sounds, almost Russian. Hello, I am... Portuguese sound almost like they're Russian. Have they're I not, done it? No, they're not. Think about Jose Mourinho. Yeah, he speaks Portuguese. Well then. Hello, <laughs> I, I am Jose, and they would like to... That's good. Uh, stuff good. stuff my, 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 my metal rod inside your anus. <laughs> Does that ring any bells, Josh? Slightly different, but yeah, you're on the money there, Joe. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> but right. other things found in chimneys. I know I've, I have been chatting to fellow chimney sweeps. Oh, um, yesterday. I is, to get, oh, hang on. Is there like a chimney sweep there's our, association? Uh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're big. We're a big community. Well, not a very big community because it ain't a very um, sort. No, not many people are chimney sweeps, are they? Um, <laughs> Close knit. But yeah, I know we look after one another. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> and um, I actually found some stuff found in chimneys um, off the community group chat we got. Oh. Um, and yes, yeah, so people have found um, Edwardian shoes because apparently this is another historic fact about chimneys and all that. People used to put shoes in chimneys to ward off evil spirits mm. back in the Edwardian time. I wonder time. why. A uh, single shoe or a pair? It, I think it had to be a lady's shoe, and it was for witches. Apparently, it stopped witches getting down chimneys. Well, did they? Did they think that witches they're they're all fucking crazy because they didn't have any shoes? So they thought, oh, we will put a pair of shoes up there, sweetener. Yeah, and be like, oh, there you go, you can calm down a bit. No more spells. Why the fuck are they putting shoes up chimneys? Don't know. It's, I mean, like you said, you find all sorts. Someone found a sawn-off shotgun. 
Um, mm. Money, Actually, jewelry. That makes sense. You would hide yeah, a shotgun up there. On some old chimneys, there's like a le- as you sort of put, not that many people put their hands up chimneys, but chimney sweeps do. There's a ledge on some open fires, and people used to hide stuff there. Valuable stuff as well, money, jewelry, shotguns in this case. Um, so yeah, you you can find all sorts, but the, mainly nowadays, the only thing we really find in chimneys are soot, birds' nests, um, and sometimes um, you know if you get like rogue builders in. If they can't be bothered to take the materials down, they'll sometimes chuck it down the chimney. And in a few cases, I've had to go in and, yeah, get all the, get all the normally roofers. So you get bits of felt tiles. Yeah, felt tiles, stuff like that. What, um, why, do you, why do you think they were called, you know, uh, Sooty and Sweep, the, uh, the puppets? Mm-hmm. Why were they called Sooty and Sweep? Don't look at me. There's got to be a connection here, Joe. So one one was covered in soot, is it? So he so looked like city he, is it, a darker colour. Yeah, so he covered in soot, and then sweep was orange. Were they in a relationship? A sweep. I are think they, they were. Are they mates? Weren't they? They were like best they just mates. mates. Mm. Are the sweeps you've got. What colour are the sweeps you've got? Are they orange? Some of my some of my brush heads are orange. Mm. I know. Ne- you might be honest, that thing here, Joe. So that must but, that but, might, must be where it's from. But most of them. I mean, m- my brush heads are coloured for different sort of densities of the brush so my black ones are really re- like really st- if, if a chimney's really tarred up or he- you know or you know we'd use the, the more stiffer brushes but then the orange ones tend to be the softer ones and then you've got white ones which are really soft which are gentle so the, the chimney sweep will do an inspection before he sweeps the chimney to decide what brush head he's going to use for that particular job how long do the white ones stay white uh not yeah not very long actually they sort of go is that an error more, more a grey <laughs> Having a white brush? Well, no, because it's to signify the start of which sort of bristle you want. What exactly. What sort of strength of bristle, Tom? So I get what I get your point, but it's a shit point. Okay. But that's only on the brushes I use. There's plenty of other brushes out there which probably are different colours. Is there... Uh, Joe, very kindly, for my birthday back in December, <laughs> Josh got me a robot vacuum cleaner, which I then lost on the train, eventually <laughs> got back. It's a long story. Is there not a market for the robot chimney sweep? Absolutely not. No? Why don't I want to have a job? A- absolute, uh, absolutely uh, not. Then I, otherwise, uh, if there's a robot chimney sweep, I'll be out of a job, so I'm going to say no for that. Um, I think, you, obviously, you can use robots for lots of other things, but sweeping chimneys, I, I, I can't see it. Because we don't just sweep we don't just sweep chimneys. We do look for, like, defects in the appliance, you know, safety, you know, especially, like, things that aren't safe, are safe. Um so, you know, it isn't just a case of a chimney sweep wouldn't just go and sweep a chimney. They try and find things that aren't right. They do lots of different tests, smoke smoke evacuation checks, which I can't see a robot doing. No. Although you do get... We get smoke alarms. Smoke alarms, which is little that baby is a robots. robot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, 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 you still have to have a person to put the batteries in. And also fix it to the ceiling. Exactly. But but mainly with But hang on then, hang on then. If we get a robot that you then argue you still need a person to put the batteries in this robot to put in the chimney, I'm then <laughs> having to pay surely your your service is less because all you're doing is putting batteries in. And then actually I could just do the batteries. But you'd have to find so you're on about a robot sweeping the chimney. So yeah. the, yeah, ro- so the robot like, would have to get in his wake up in the morning, get in his van, drive to your house, get <laughs> get his rods out, walk to your appliance, sheet up, get your cup of tea or coffee, which you're going to offer on arrival, like you said, maybe a Jaffa cake. But um, <laughs> how's a robot doing that? No, no, <laughs> I don't mean like. I don't mean like an AI robot. Perform person. every task. Oh, you mean like someone design? <laughs> wow. I, meant, <laughs> I thought you were on about this AI with all this AI. I meant just like the round, you know, the mowers. Or yeah, the yeah, mowers yeah. You get that you just put on your lawn and it goes here. Can't you just get an automatic chimney sweep? <sighs> well, I, some, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> clever enough to design one, so uh, I'll stick with me rods and brushes. I fucking love that. You just described the whole job as a chimney sweep. But if a robot did it, I've why are they going to do that? I, I, well, because they're a fucking robot that you've asked to do it. I f- oh yeah, I'm I'm with you now. I wish you made that more clear at the start. <laughs> I was on. I was thinking more AI with all this AI going yeah, on at the minute. Yeah, um, it's like the uh, idea that a robot in a factory that does some sort of manufacturing in a car would have to wake up also in the morning. So 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 get dressed. It, 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 it would be a robot to aid. Get to work. A robot aid. aid. To aid yeah. my yeah. work. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. Um, Would you if it okay? So say someone has invented that, and say I've invented it, and I've gone, Josh, I've got this little robot sweep for you. Mm. I want to sell it to you. Would you use that as one of your tools or would you stick to the old craftsmanship of rodding? I mean, I, I, I would stick to the traditional, like the more craftsman way. I think as well, you get more of a service. You know, if, if I'm just sat there watching a robot go up and down the chimney, I'm, what, what are you paying me for? Where if I'm there putting a putting a shift in, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Having me cup of tea and Jaffa cakes, you'll yeah. think like, yeah, he's earned his money there. So I'm getting the impression like Jaffa cakes are you go to here. I just get a lot of, for some reason I just get yeah a lot a lot of customers have Jaffa cakes but you either love Jaffa cakes or so maybe they don't like the Jaffa cakes and that's They're why they're getting rid of them on you. But you don't mind because you love Jaffa cakes. I I don't mind a Jaffa cake. What would be your biscuit of choice then if I don't, I don't think you can beat a shortbread. You like a shortbread? Oh, I, I, I Josh. Quite, I quite like a shortbread. A shortbread not, finger. Or a round uh, one. Uh, any any short, they all taste the same, don't they? But yeah, you know, like you know, especially near Chris, especially near Christmas time. Mm. Everyone has short. I think people like if, sort of your mate will buy them shortbread. So I get a lot of shortbread Christmas time, and you know the ones with like the um, you know, the nice nice deal on the front of the like a sort of tartan pattern like tin. A, yeah, like this with the stag on the front, not there. Magnificent. Did we and, just become BFFs? I, for, for, I fucking love shortbread. And you get all the different styles, oh. you know, circle ones, square ones. But you you know, but then I think how many biscuits is acceptable to take? Because you can't just walk off with the tin, can you? So if they've as you're sort an of open dunking, tin in front of you. I, yeah, they do, so they'll go help yourself. Yeah. How, how, what's like what's like, like a well no, but what, so I tend to take two, but I think sometimes I could get away with three. I yeah, could but get if, away with three. If they've said help yourself, you can have the lot. Well that's what I'm thinking. You can have everything in my I basket. think you need to try it. What, nick a, nick a tin of shortbread? Well, you're not nicking it. They're, they're some giving pe- it you. But some people, you know, <clears throat> I mean, when people, when people when people sort of say stuff like, you know, if you had friends over and you say, make yourself at home, you wouldn't want them doing everything you do in your room, would you? No, you don't literally mean make this your home. You mean temporarily Yeah, relax. but when they say help yourself, I, I always think, I, I always find it's a, it's a big decision on how many biscuits to take. Does it depend on how many biscuits remain in the tin? So if you've got a full tin of shortbreads, mm. they've left it there. They've even put the lid underneath the, the yep. box itself to make it quite clear the lid mm. doesn't need to mm. go back on. Does that <laughs> legitimise taking maybe five or six biscuits because you've left a lot for them? Mm. Mm. Whereas if there was five or six shortbreads left yeah. and you took four, yeah. you've left them one. Yeah, but I think one. it's polite, isn't it? It's sort of saying I'm not taking the piss here. Yeah. Sometimes they'll give you a they'll give you a little dish with like two on, and you mm. think. You know, if it's, it's ri- if it's rich tea, I leave them. No <clears> point in dunking them in. It's dunking them in, break, nothing on the end, isn't it? No, it's fucking awful. The, sk- you get, you the a, fear I get when I dunk a rich tea, but sometimes I do it just for that fear. Let's see how long you can hold it. In. Yeah, <laughs> and then it ruins the tea. Do you ever? Would you carry on with the tea? Would you fish out the rich tea with a, a teaspoon, or just no, set the tea off? I don't drink the tea anyway. I only make a tea to dunk. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't drink tea. It's fucking shit. Is a shortbread the best biscuit to find in a hotel room? You know, when you go into a new hotel room and the first thing you do is check out, are there any biscuits? It's either a shortbread or um, a Viennese oh. swirl. You know, the one yeah. with a bit of strawberry and cream in it. That's my fucking... Oh, that's Egg, my yeah. Love. Oh, yeah, because it's, sh- it's usually shortbread on top as well. Exactly. Bit- oh, it's like a hard Victoria sponge. Mm. Oh, it's fantastic. Is it as hard a decision for you to make on how many uh, biscuits to take than it is whether you take a shit in the customer's oh. house or not. I've I t- I've never ever ever used the customer's toilet. No, not even never. For pee. Actually, no, that's a lie. If if the customer's my friend or relative and I'm desperate, yeah, I don't know. I sometimes feel awkward asking, "Can I go to the toilet in a customer's house?" Because you're not. It do, sometimes sweeps can take you a little while, but you you don't tend to be in there for more than an hour. So sweep a log burner, you know, some log burners I could be in and out in a half hour. Um, so yeah, I don't tend to ask to use a customer's toilet. So that's an easy question for me to answer. I think that approach actually legitimises you taking more biscuits. Yeah, because because of the fact that you've come in and I've said you can make yourself at home. Yeah. And you've only taken three of my favourite shortbreads because I've said help yourself. Mm. And then you've refused to take a shit in my house. Out of politeness, mm. you've actually gone. Actually, I'll hold it because there's an SO up the road, and I'll just take a dump in that. Then you you should then take at least five of my favourite shortbread, 
And you should move forward with that sort of approach that go, hang on a minute, I'm not shitting in your house, so I'm going to take an extra biscuit or two. Well, Spell it out in those exact terms, Josh, if you were confronted about your shortbread consumption. Next time I get offered shortbread, I'll keep that well in mind. Because <laughs> if someone... And, and I'll go... And if they said, why have you taken five, you're greedy, I'll say, Joe Marler told me to no, get up with him. No, 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 that's not what we've agreed to. He's bigger than me. No, no, <laughs> we've agreed that you just go, oi, I've taken five because I'm not taking a shit in your toilet. But you don't always... But I'll put take... two back and then take a shit. I know you don't need to take a shit, but you could probably force it's leverage, isn't it? Well... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know I don't know what to say really but oh, it's food for thought yeah it is yeah now talking to customers go on about you know we've discussed the biscuit and the tea and stuff like that what have there been any sort of weird folk that you've come across or what are your usual oh, characters you come across so 90% of my customers are, are, are brilliant you know lovely fantastic people and it's, all, it's always a case of just sort of picking up where we left off the year before and, you know, um, they ask how things are going and it's, it's brilliant. Yeah, you do you do get some, you know, like you do obviously come across some strange, strange people, um, rude people, which I can't stand. How do you cope uh, with the rude ones? Add on 20 quid. Oh. Not all the time, no, but I just... <laughs> I, I, I Not just, all the time. I just, I just, with the rude ones, I just sort of... I mean, I, I, you know, respect them, but I just sort of get in and out, don't really have a chin wag. Because mm. sometimes a chin wag can be longer than the sweep, especially if they, you know, quite a lot of custom, a lot of my customers maybe be, you know, slightly of older age, and I might be the first person they've seen mm. for a few days. So, I, you know, if they want to chat and, um, you know, and all that, I'm, I'm happy to stay on for an extra 10 minutes. I don't charge for that. That's but the worst, the worst thing with the older customers is the gone off milk in the tea. Oh. And I, did a lot I of suspect older... you're not one to tell them either, are you? No, but what I do tend to do is say, I just need to pop outside and have a look at the chimney pot and it goes into the edge, you know what I mean? But then one, 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 old, one lovely old lady thought I was thirsty and I just put the empty cup behind me. And she goes, <gasps> God, you must have drank that quick. Made another. Oh. And she was watching then, so I had to drink it. It was like, oh. a, like a Bush Tucker trial. <laughs> I'm a celeb. <laughs> 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 Did it have creamy bits bobbing around on the top? Yeah, yeah, you know, like the yeah, it's mm. sort of like the yeah floaters, really. Like, yeah, yeah, creamy floaters. But do you know when? Do you know when? It hits the nose before the taste buds. See, and that is yeah, not nice. You could have held your nose, mind you. She knows then. I ju- I just pretended it was a pint of Guinness and threw it back. Banged it. Yeah, yeah. that's what you got to do, son. To pretend you're on the chair. Yeah. The, look and like a hot just, Guinness. Just see it off, yeah. But I mean, I, I did let it cool down because you can't drink hot drinks fast, can you? <laughs> <laughs> and then she's got an asbestos mouth. <laughs> what about uh, any hoarders? Oh, ever come across teddy them? bears? I went to a jo- and it, it was quite weird because teddy bears. Oh, uh, I I kid you not. I I went into a job near Bath. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> They're all near Bath because you—that's where you work. And um, yeah, but that could be anywhere. You know what I mean? Like, near, Within a radius. It's, it's, of yeah, it's where you think near. Like some vocal people might think Malcham's local, but actually, yeah. it's quite a drive by car. <laughs> 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 and um, and um, I fucking don't know anymore. Uh, Go on. <laughs> and I got to this job, and I opened the door. Smoke stained ceilings, not that I'm judging. Um, <laughs> and ev- that doesn't sound like it. Every single stair had a teddy bear on it. Really? And I thought, well. Hang on, like each- a normal set of stairs or just, like just, just no, three just, stairs? No, no, like normal flight of stairs going to the upstairs of the house. I did that. Some had even had two or three on each stair. I thought, oh, he, you know, may- maybe they got children in the family in the stairs. And he's, you know, but then when I go into the front room, <gasps> over 100. Just everywhere, and old ones, new ones, minions were about, and <laughs> and it's the it's the only job I swept left-handed because I wanted to see where he, you know, because I thought because their glassy eyes were staring at. So well, you swept it, left-handed, it's, I just, right it's, it's just quite eerie because when I was in this place, I didn't see no sign of like children or or nothing. He was that was a strange one, Joe. So just to clarify, you swept left-handed, so your right hand, your dominant hand, was free to. If yeah, any I of those just, bears I just came swing. at you. No, I just wanted to see what was going on, where the particular person was in the house and stuff. What difference does it make what hand you're using to see stuff? No, so ah, so so, <laughs> so I wanted 
He had them serial killer sort of glasses, you know, with like <laughs> slight tint of yellow. I was yeah. waiting for someone to say, help, help. And I, you know, I maybe he had... And he had those serial killer you know, glasses. Well, like it's the a generalisation, like but like yeah. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dahmer. Dahmer okay, yeah. And do you know, like, when they have, like, the little vision... By thing, focals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, correct terminology. Um, and I just wanted to know where this particular person was, because you give me a very eerie feeling. So by sweeping left-handed to answer your question, I was looking... Like, the wall was behind me, and I was looking, so I could always know... Because I thought maybe them teddy bears represented something or something. But surely if you oh. sweep right-handed, My back there's be... still a wall behind No, you. no. So it was, a, it was a log burner, Joe. Oh. Um, so if I swept right-handed, I'd been looking at the radiator. Yeah. And the seats and the kitchen and all that was behind me. Right. But if I sweep left-handed, I'm my body's shifted, hasn't it? All those... Yeah, it has. You with me? Yeah. All those glassy-eyed bears yeah, staring yeah. at you. It was a bit... Yeah, it was a bit... A bit... Was so... it... Was that like instead of an hour jobby, that was like a 10 minute jobby? That was my PB. Oh, was it? Yeah. Duration? 15. In and out in 15. I could sit and talk to Josh so could I. fucking all day, but in terms of our chimney sweep subjects, have you got. Okay, Josh, Josh, have you got anything else? That, I think we're done with our questions, but we've loved you so much we could just sit here for hours and listen to you. Have you got anything more that you want to divulge? Um, I mean,. Just to the viewers listening, um, I would if you have got a log burner and you have got a fireplace. Obviously, you don't have to get me in, um, but it is very important to get a registered chimney sweep in to check your appliance once a year, um, just as a safety, you know, on safety precautions. But um, there's plenty of, um, you know, there's there's actually um, a federation of British chimney sweeps where five or six organisations from approved associations of chimney sweeps. Each one of them, they got brilliant sweeps. Um, get yeah, get a professional in to check your chimney once a year. And Josh, if people uh, want to find they want you specifically to help with their flues, maybe they are near to Bath. It could be Molsham, it could be Chippenham, Joe. Well, only near to Bath. Well, well, I I cover Bath, Bristol, and surrounding areas. Oh. Um, oh. Would you do Stroud? Y y if I had a, well, see what I do is I try and book them in. So so if, so, so if I had four, if I had five in Stroud to do, I would go to Stroud. But maybe one m might be a bit on the far side. What about Heathfield? Where's that? East Sussex. Is that yours? Yeah. Harlequin tickets evolved or? Oh. Yes. I will come and sweep yours. If me and Rory. Who's my, Rory? My colleague. Yeah. Yeah. He, hang on. I thought you said you didn't have chimney boys anymore. He ain't a boy, Joe. He's he's six foot. He helps me carry. He helps me carry the kit. Oh, right, you're too. the chimney boy in the relationship. I, I, I'm well. I'm smaller than Rory, yes, but right. I wouldn't say I'm the chimney boy. Um, I'm the expert. The master sweep. I am the master sweep, <laughs> and Rory would agree with that. Um, but yeah, a couple of Quinn's tickets. I'll be there. All right, we'll see what we can do, <laughs> Josh. But would that and would that involve a pasty as well? Do you have like pasty stands in Harlequins? We do down the wreck. Uh, if some sort of some sort of food involved, we do some sort of pulled pork um, sausage number. I just saw it out for you, of course. Um, Josh, you've been absolutely wonderful. Thank you it's so been, much. It's for been coming. madness. <laughs> it has, in the it best really... possible way. I've, ne I've never gone from flus to some of the stuff we've chatted about. <laughs> no. No, nor of what. I do feel really like good. Like, yeah, madness. It, I, I can't believe this is like a job, isn't it? Isn't it? For you <laughs> <two> as well. <laughs> it's a job. Oh, you know, I thought chimney sweeping was good. <laughs> where's the seat? Where's the? Where can I apply? <laughs> I'll give them up. <laughs> Just have a laugh. <laughs> nice, but you go for a nice lunch as well, don't you? Oh yeah, we do. Yeah. Is that included? <laughs> <laughs> Josh, can you come on tour with us when we get on tour? Oh, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah? Get me involved. <laughs> Fucking I thought if I can grow a bigger beard and maybe get... A, this one's gone. So yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Maybe if he wanted a rest, see, I could maybe go and disguise. Get the front row magic, yeah. Yeah, you got, uh, your hair's way too thick. And my shoulders aren't near as big you, as yours. You'll have to thin your hair out and loads yeah. and get a bigger darb. Unless I wear a hat. What, like a woolly hat on the pitch? Well, I can't tell. I mean, I I know that maybe. You know, have you got the Mohawk or is it all off? Yeah, I have got a Mohawk. Yeah. If I got this one, you can't tell what airline I got, can you? It's true, actually, with the hat on. No, but you've got a different face. Your your nose is straighter. Yeah, there's and some, you're a different. Surely there's someone behind the scenes that can. What like yeah. AI? Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, you see these undercover people that get, you know, transformed. Well, you, you can't, can't see them undercover. They're undercover. 
what, what are you on about now? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on about the live show. Where is it? Is it? You go all, you go all around, don't you? We did go around, yeah. We Next did, time yeah. we're in fucking anywhere near Bath, mm. you're fucking there. You're on. You're, you're just coming. Well, I, I do us. drive as well, so I can go further afield. <laughs> <laughs> if if there's like a dinner or something involved, and it's hotel included, <laughs> Bobby. Yeah, get me in. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off! I love you. Thank you. <laughs> You've been unbelievable. Thank you. Uh, Josh Niche. 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 Josh Niche Chimney Sweep. JN Chimney Sweep. JN Chimney Sweep. Legend. Thank you, mate. For all your chimney needs. <laughs>